So we're on the fourth tutorial of uh, Flash CS6. We are uh, visiting hunkim.com slash asgamer, which takes you to an excellent website introducing you to making Flash games. So we click on the fourth link here, Level Mechanics and Animated Backgrounds. If you scroll to the bottom of this webpage, you will be able to download the Flash file, the zip file, and then extract it. And basically it talks about how uh, you can actually make your uh, spaceship jump to the other side of the screen as well as it talks about uh, making your spaceship bounce so here we have the bounce effect you can see that's interesting and finally most excitingly we have stars flying and that can be applied to many different games so the, the tutorial begins with the idea of you controlling your arrow keys and if the X position is uh, less than zero off the left side of the screen you can simply make it equals uh, to uh, some large number that's uh, making the spaceship reappear on the right and that's pretty easy to do but let's just take a look at the code here for the little bouncy effect within flash I'm gonna go uh, open and you can see within this uh, extracted folder I'm gonna go to com AS gamer basics one and we have three files three classes engine ship and star these are AS files so shift click to select them all open and let's take a look at this bouncing effect so we click on our ship.as file and we play our um, little control enter run our game again and we see that the bouncing effect applies also vertically and if you look around the code, we've already talked about the other parts of the code. The part that's new is is the idea of if um, look for the comment that says "Stay inside screen." You might want to press Control F, and you can even search for this text if you want to jump to the same part of the code. It says um, if X is greater than stage ref dot stage width. So here the uh, stage ref dot stage width refers to how wide your actual screen is so if you're off uh, the uh, rightmost part and what's going to happen is that we are forcing X to just be at that maximum value can't actually pass it and then we are flipping the uh, horizontal velocity so if you're moving very fast to the right when you say that you're gonna flip the sign a negative instead of going right it's gonna immediately go left and uh, the same goes with if you're less than zero we're fixing you back in at position zero and we're flying left but then the velocity gets flipped so we bounce off to the right and the same goes with the Y values the Y values get flipped and uh, whether you're going off the top or bottom of the screen recall from the previous code that the, the velocity um, of x as well as the velocity of y has some friction so as you fly into it you bounce right off it but then it starts slowing down just because we have some friction code going as well now let's take a look at the the starry field the exciting part click on your star code so when we think about the star class uh, we somehow connect it to the stage. This is the constructor. The constructor has the same name as the class, so this is where the code begins. So we already talked about some codes that are similar to this. Just the idea where we want to actually be able to draw the star onto the to the main uh, stage. So therefore, we need the reference, and we're calling this uh, function called setup star, and we're passing in the value true. So this is a boolean boolean variable and the function is right here below that we haven't taken a look at yet we are also adding an event listener so we're calling the function loop and we're calling it very quickly every single time we enter the frame so we're setting up a star here and then we're also looping this function here let's take a look at the function setup star okay so I'm looking at this function called setup star I just uh, rewrote this uh, line of code as follows so what we have here is uh, an inline conditional it looks complicated but it's not so the the line of code that I just commented out with my two forward slashes is y equals randomize y question mark math dot random function which returns a random number between 0 and 1 
times stage ref dot stage height colon zero. Now, what does this mean? This is called the inline conditional. It's basically a, in a basic if else statement. Y equals. So we definitely want to make the the y the y value of our star um, equal to cer certain value. And it, and here the question mark means um, based on the result of randomized y, a, a boolean result is either true or false. If it is true, we're making y equals to the first part. To the part to that's to the left of this colon. Otherwise, we're making y equals to the right part, which is zero. So I basically rewrote this in a in a way that I think more, more people will be familiar with. If randomize y equal equals true means is it true? It's going to do the first part, which is the part on the left here. Else, it's going to do the second part, y equals zero. Now, uh, does randomize y equal equals true? This is the same thing as saying if randomize y. That's the exact same code as this and this are the same. All right, anyway, so we are uh, somehow setting up the, the y value of our star. And initially, when the star is created, the, the value that is passed in to call this function is true. So indeed, it is true. Therefore, as a star, this class file is called a star. So as the instance uh, of the star, is actually created, uh, it will indeed have a random y value. Remember, the math.random is between 0 and 1, so the lowest value is 0 times stage ref dot stage height. 0 times anything is 0, so the y value would be near the top, which is 0, and the maximum math random value would be 1. 1 times the stage height, uh, depending on how many pixels your stage height is, is at the bottom of the screen. So we see that the, the star's x uh, position is also uh, randomly across the width of the screen, the alpha. So here, remember the star is a movie clip, so the, the mo all movies have this property called alpha, which refers to how see-through it is. And this also is uh, uh, either completely um, invisible or completely visible, because math.random returns a random number between 0 and 1. Uh, alpha of 1 is fully visible, alpha of 0 is uh, invisible, and alpha of 0 0.5 is half visible. Rotation, so we're basically making everything randomized, the rotation property, how rotated this this star is, and the star can look based on this, it, it can actually look like an oval, because we are playing with the scale x, how wide the x uh, is squished, as well as how how much the y y portion of the the circle is squished, so when you rotate an ellipse, it actually looks like some kind of nice galaxy. So remember that as we run our actual um, animation, uh, stars are um, moving at traveling at different rates. Some are falling quickly, some are falling slowly. So therefore, we set the star's speed uh, somewhat randomized. Now let's take a look at this function called loop. Every single frame, the star's y position is going to increase based on uh, that speed. And if the y is off the screen, at the bottom of the screen, stage height, we're going to call the function setup star. So let's fly back up to the setup star function. And uh, notice that when we call the function setup star, we're not passing in any arguments. Previously, we passed in true, but this time we're not passing in any arguments. So, because we did not pass in any arguments, the default value that we do initialize it with is false. That's what this part is. Equals false means the default, if you pass in no arguments, this is the value that is passed in, so it automatically becomes false. So this time, the y value is back to 0. So uh, essentially, the star is um, ha randomly created. It scrolls down, and then it pops up to the top, and then it starts re-scrolling. So we have a nice loop going on here that's creating a very visually pleasing effect. If you like this tutorial, hit that like button. Thank you very much.